Yeah, I'm in the Merchant Marine. Oh, you're a Marine? Oh, thank you for your service. Yeah, you're what? Wait, what? No! You know, it seems like almost every other time I talk about work and use the words Merchant Marine, everybody thinks I'm in the actual Marines and I've done like three tours in Afghanistan or something. So I'm here to set the record straight. I'm Sean here at L'Oreal Arts. I'm a third assistant engineer and I've been sailing for over two years now. Well, four if you count my cadet years, but who's counting? If you don't know what a third engineer is, stay tuned. Now, before I actually get into my different city stories, it's important you guys know all the terms and all the different ranks to make things easier. That's so I don't rant for 20 minutes and you don't have any clue what I'm talking about. But, hey, 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 before you click off the video thinking that I'm gonna be all boring and stuff, don't worry, we're gonna get all exciting. It's gonna be plenty of jokes, so stick around. It's gonna be great. Now, how many of you understand what I'm saying? The brake is uh, inboard of the anchor windlass on the bow of the ship. Make sure you use the leeward side of the weather deck to get to it, and make sure your foot doesn't get stuck in the hose pipe. And don't trip on the pelican hook. We uh, don't want to pull you out. Now, the funny thing is I was looking up nautical terms for a super confusing sentence to use, but most of the terms I found online, no one uses. I've never heard anyone called a landlubber or heard a drunk person said that they're three sheets to the wind. I mean, what does that even mean? You want to help me out here? Another popular term is all hands on deck. Now, rarely that's used in its full term. The more common term is just saying all hands when you mean everyone. In the modern maritime industry, a wall is a bulkhead, starboard is right, port is left, yada, yada, yada. I'm sure you've heard these terms. Now, I know many of you have never been on a merchant ship before and many of you have never even seen one in person, but I know that some of you are thinking, but Sean, I've been sailing for 20 years. I have my chief's license. I know, shh, 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 shh. It's okay, okay, it's gonna be fine. Don't worry. Now, on a ship, there are three main departments. The deck department, the engine department, and the steward department. Due to how long I realized this video would be, I decided to split this video up. Otherwise, it would be like half an hour. And I know you guys don't got the patience for that. I don't have the patience for that. The first part will cover the engine department. The second would be on the deck department. And the third part will be on the steward's department. So let's get into it. Literally every modern ship has an engine room. If you're on board a vessel and it's made of metal, chances are there's a 100% chance the ship has an engine, which also means it has an engine room. <laughs> yeah, I'm a genius, I know. You know what also goes with an engine room? Engineers. Uh, all right, I'll stop. So each engine department usually has about nine ranks that are split into who has an engineer's license and who doesn't. So basically officers and non-officers. The licensed members are the chief engineer, first engineer, second engineer, the third engineer, and the unlicensed guys are the junior engineer, the oiler, the electrician, and the wiper. And then there's the cadet who's in kind of a weird spot. Now. Each engine room is outfitted with a bunch of tools, equipment, and machinery, which will definitely kill you if you use them improperly, and also give you cancer. Also, most engines are bigger than your house, but we'll get into that later. But working in an engine room is okay as long as you don't press the break the ship button or pull the blow everyone up lever. Every ship has one. Ah, but don't forget the chief engineer yells at everyone button. But the only one who might touch that or any of these is the cadet, so keep them away from it. Now, speaking of cadets, cadets are the absolute lowest on the totem pole of the ship. Whether you're in the deck department or the engine department, they are the lowest. Technically, they're officers, but not really. They don't even really get paid a wage, just a stipend. Though, I guess cadet is just a fancy way of staying an intern. The cadet is typically an 18 to 20 year old kid from a maritime academy who is studying to become a full-fledged licensed engineer. They typically spend a lot of time around the unlicensed engineers, but also spend a lot of time making themselves look like an idiot. And yes, before you say anything, I was a cadet too. I remember walking on my first ship and not knowing what a wrench was. Yeah, that was uh, fun. But I will talk about that later. Lots of things to come, so stay tuned. Cadets tend to be that special little monster that's at their point in the career where they don't know enough to know what they're doing, but 
they know enough to think that they know what they're doing, and that can cause a lot of issues, and also potentially dangerous situations when the said cadet decides to press a button, which uh, happens to be not the right button. That's why the cadet is usually very heavily supervised. But fortunately, nearly every cadet I've ever met means well and is just trying to learn. As long as they keep a good head on their shoulders and keep trying and ask questions, and also listen to the engineers, the engineering crew tends to cut them a lot of slack. Well, that is as long as they don't accidentally blow up the ship. Now, cadets can come in all flavors and sizes, but there are a few that certainly break the mold. Some cadets can be older than the chief engineer. This happens when a man has a late life crisis and decides to get their license. Now, this is extremely rare. I've only met one or two of these people who actually fit this mold, but more often than not, these people are just unlicensed people who finally decided that they wanted to take the time to get their license and advance their career. I mean, they're about to retire, but that's great. I've met quite a few people who have done that, and they certainly come from any age group. I have met a few people who are actually my age and doing the exact same thing. But by that time, these people have already had their seat time and can just get their certifications and take their license test without being a full-on cadet. But the whole thing with licenses I'll explain later and cover in another video. Now, my absolute favorite type of cadet is the one who has literally passed the license exam and is actually an engineer, but their school won't let them graduate yet for whatever reason. I mean, it's sad, but you know, meeting one of these poor souls is like meeting a unicorn. You're lucky to even see one. And that's a good thing because that sucks. Now, there's not much to the wiper position on a ship. He's basically the janitor of the engine department. They are the entry level unlicensed position. He's responsible for cleaning up any leaks, spills, and general messes around the engine room. But his job is one of the most important. It's really important that the wiper cleans up any oil slick so that no one slips and breaks the face. Usually you can tell pretty easily if the wiper is doing their job. I'll let you in on a little secret. It's by looking at how much teeth everyone still has. Now, on nearly every ship I've been on, the oiler is the assistant to the engineer on watch. Now, that is if the ship actually stands a watch. Now, if you don't actually know what a watch is, it's where the engineer and an oiler are responsible for making sure the ship doesn't blow up. They typically sit in an engine control room and, you know, watch. These watches can typically range from four to 12 hours and can either be fun or absolutely soul draining, depending on how fun your partner is. They really suck. Now on watch standing ships, the oiler is typically the one walking around the hot engine room and writing temperatures down and pressures, while the engineer usually supervises from their very comfy air conditioned control room. On non-watch standing ships, oilers typically assist with various maintenance and projects around the ships. They help out. Now, I know what the name sounds like, but the junior engineer is the top ranking unlicensed position there is in the engine department. This person is typically responsible for making any repairs around the ship that are needed, and in some cases is responsible for dealing with the poop tank. Yeah, every ship has one. The junior engineer is typically the guy who's relied on because he has the technical and on-hand knowledge and experience to do things correctly a lot better than others on the ship. Hey, don't think I forgot about you guys. Now, I really don't feel like I need to explain this one. It's the electrician. They do electrical stuff. Moving on. On ships, there are either one or two third engineers. If the ship has a watch rotation, then the ship will have two. Third engineers are the lowest ranking engineers on the ship, obviously. Their duties range from simple repair projects around the ship to working on giant projects that the first engineer wants done. Most ships will have specific duties that the third engineer is responsible for, like dealing with the wire systems or the poop pipes. Suit treatment if you want to be super technical. Most third engineers are people who recently got their license and have very little experience. The second engineer isn't really too much different from the third engineer, but these people have enough seat time to get their license upgraded. These people are usually responsible for dealing with anything related to fuel. On watch standing vessels, they'll have a watch standing shift. It's really not much different than the third engineer. 
The first engineer is the guy who's responsible for managing the engine department's projects and make sure that everyone gets done what needs to get done. He's the one who keeps the engine department in line while the chief is up to their ears in paperwork. All right, now I got a question for you. What member of the engineering department is overworked, underslept, and someone you maybe see once every couple of days? If you said the chief engineer, then you get a gold star. Don't spend it all in one place. Every chief engineer I've ever met is always super cranky. These people are the ones who track all the ongoing projects on a ship and order new parts. They are the, typically the first point of contact for engineering between the ship and the company that the vessel belongs to. Since this person is typically up to their ears in paperwork, you'll rarely see them unless the engine explodes or something. Strap on your gloves, put on those safety glasses, and don your hard hats. Wait, no one uses hard hats. Now, to raise awareness for potentially dangerous situations, every episode there will be a potentially lethal situation, and if you guess what's wrong before the time is up, you win. So, here we have Joe, just finishing up a shift. He wants to go to his room, but he still has to lift this heavy object with his partner before he can call it a day. He goes and he picks up the closest strap he can find. So, can you tell what the issue is? So the issue here is one, never, ever, 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 ever use damage equipment to lift a load of any kind. If it looks frayed or it's hanging by a thread, definitely don't use it. It might fall on you and seriously injure you. Second, if you can avoid it, never stand under a heavy load in case something happens and it drops. People have actually been killed because of this. Remember, there's no doctors at sea, so if you break your arm, you might need a way to wait a week or two to get it even looked at. And that sucks. So there you have it. There's the engineering department for nearly every ship out there in the modern fleet. Usually they're pretty standard and may have less positions based on the size of the vessel. Next time, we will cover the deck department. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and or subscribe. Also tell your friends. I plan on uploading every two weeks or so, so check back then. Also join us on Discord. Here we have a wonderful community where you can share your ideas and influence the show. If you actually sail, you can share sea stories too. So I can't wait for you to come join our awesome community. Until next time, from wherever you are, this is Sean from L'Oreal Arts, wishing you fair winds and following seats.